Well, I called this chapter Other Sounds. I couldn't think of anything better to call it because there's other sounds we make on the trumpet have all sorts of funny names. Some of them are called doits and falloffs and shakes and half valving. What does all that mean? Some of you are going to be familiar with it. Here's how I do it. Firstly, let's look at a gliss, short for glissando. Now that means, of course, to slide from one note to the other. And uh, the way we do it is use a technique called half valving. And as the name suggests, you pull the valves down halfway or thereabouts. You can do it with just one valve, two, or even three. The more valves you use, the more extreme the sound becomes. It also needs more air the more valves you use. The reason for that is when we put a valve half down, we do actually restrict the air flow through the trumpet quite a lot. Do that with three valves and it's almost impossible to blow. Let me show you how it works. I'm going to begin on a note and glissando up to another one. And I'll do it by pushing the valve, just one valve, down halfway. I'll do that once more. Now you might have heard that's not a perfectly smooth glissando. It had a little jump in it and a little jump. So that tells me, and if you get that yourself you'll know, I need more half valving. So now I'm going to try it with two valves down. Have a listen. Now that sounds quite smooth. So in that register of the instrument it's obvious Two valves down will give us a nice smooth glissando. All I'm doing with my lips is the same thing I would do to normally jump from one note to the next. But by putting the valves halfway down, the trumpet just slides really nicely. That can be a great effect for all sorts of things. Have a listen to it. I just play a little phrase now and I'll use it for quite a longer glissando. It's very effective. It's a good sound, isn't it? I use three valves there because going a bit further and the higher up I go seems to work better with some more down. Just experiment. I don't have like a hard and fast rule of which notes you need which valves. That's why I showed you a few different examples. Try half valving and then just try sliding the instrument around. Somehow it unlocks the pitch. You can do all sorts of things with it. Another great sound is called the shake. This is one I always wanted to do when I was a kid. As soon as I heard someone do a shake, I went, oh yeah, it's a very jazz sound. It's called a shake because one way of doing it is to actually shake the instrument physically backwards and forwards. Now, if you've already had a look at my chapter on range, you know I'm not that much in favour of pulling the instrument back against your lips. When you do a shake by shaking, you're pulling it on and off your lips. So I have another way of doing it. All I do, if this is my lips, is just... Pull them a little bit like that, backwards and forwards. I'll put that right in front of my head. You can see what I'm doing, just backwards and forwards with the lips like that. It's very small. And what it does is it causes the instrument to shake. It's really what we call a lip trill, but much more violent, which gives it that jazzy sound. Okay, so I'll play you a lip trill first, and then we'll turn it into a shake. Lip trill is simply going from one note to another and trilling, or going up and down between them, purely using your lips. Now if I do the same thing and I get a bit more violent with my lips doing that, just go a little bit over the top and a little bit more air, it's always that, and it turns into a shake. Okay, you can even move your jaw up and down a little bit while you do it. It kind of helps the lips do that movement. Have one more look at that. Okay, that's a great sound if you put it as part of a jazz phrase. I'll put it on the end of a phrase now, maybe throw a gliss in there too. Have a listen. Now with shakes and glisses in there, what else can we do? Well, another thing, it's often called a doit. And uh, it's a half valve maneuver again. It's like a gliss, but it has no finish. It just disappears. Have a listen. I'll play that again. 
what you do is just keep going up as high as you can and it'll just disappear. Okay, you don't stop on a note. So a gliss without an end is called a doit. A fall off is a similar thing, but it goes the other way. As the name suggests, you fall off the note. But to make it fall off smoothly, again, we use half vowels. And just like a doit, it has no ending. It just disappears. So we just push down with the valves and then go down with our embouchure and with our air and keep going and it will just disappear. It's important with this one to make sure it doesn't end on a note. That's kind of easy when you're going up because you just disappear. On the way down, if you're not careful, you can end up going and ending on a note, which is probably not part of the chord you were playing. So just take the air away at the end, like this. As it falls, I just take the air away. You can do that real slow if you want to. A slow fall can sound great, particularly if a trumpet section does it together. And just let go of it at the end. So we've got shakes, glissandos, fall-offs, doits. There's a lot of other things you can do with the sound on the trumpet. They're techniques that I've showed you for doing those sounds. But some other sounds are not really so easy to actually give you a technique for. One of the things that sounds great on a trumpet is to make the sound very breathy when you play, like when you're playing a ballad. Now I'm not going to tell you something to do with your lips or with your ear to do that, because everyone's lips are a little different, and we tend to do those things a different way. The reason I'm mentioning it is the way to do it is to have the sound firmly in your mind. Now elsewhere on this DVD there's a chapter about sound, and I'll talk about that a lot. All I'm going to say here is, is no good trying to play a breathy sound if you don't have one in your head. And the best way to get one, have a listen to some players that you admire. Put some CDs on, and when you hear a sound you really like and go, oh, that's a fantastic sound, how does he do that? Never mind about how, just listen to it a lot. Then play with that sound in your mind, and you'll be amazed at how you will make the sound. I can tell you're not believing me, so I want you to do something right now. I'm going to make a sound. How about this with my voice? Eep. I'll do that again. Eep. Now you do it no matter how silly you think it is. I bet you just did it pretty accurately, just like I did. You notice I didn't say, do it high in your throat. Uh, make an E sound and uh, raise your tongue at the back and all the things you would have had to do to do it, did I? I just said, make this sound. And you did it. That's how you got to do it with the trumpet sometimes. Don't think about what technically is required. If I get you to do that ip sound again now, after all that stuff I've told you, you probably can't do it. We sometimes tend to do the same thing with playing an instrument. Don't approach it from that, because it's so hard to get away from it once you've approached it in a technical way. Just listen to the sound you want. Perhaps you're listening to Miles Davis or Chet Baker or someone with a really, really mellow, beautiful sound, and you want to make that sound. Don't ask how. Just listen to what it is. Get it into your mind, and then play. You'll find if you keep doing that, it might not work immediately. You'll start to make that sound. Okay, so those techniques I showed you, yeah, there's little tricks for those. But the type of sound you make, other sounds than just your straight trumpet sound, let's call it that, particularly when you're playing a solo and you want to be really individual, they're going to come from inside you. And they work best if you've got the sound in your head first.